Hi, this is Tyler Edlin with the Brush Sauce Academy. Now, if you're an artist that struggles with kind of coming up with ideas, uh, planning these ideas, and then executing on them, this is going to be a video for you because I'm going to talk about various types of strategies here for all skill levels. Now, one of the biggest pitfalls I see with a lot of artists that they start drawing or painting without a particular idea in mind to begin with. I'm not saying that this is an absolute or that you even need to have a fully fleshed out image and complete idea in your head you know when you start not at all but just have part of it because if you have part of an idea that'll enable you to thumbnail it and thumbnails are great because they can guide your moment to moment decision making through the beginning of the painting all the way to the very end and they're great for character designs they're great for coming up with different environmental compositions to prop designs so let's look at the five types of thumbnails and figure out which one is best for you. Now let me know down below which ones you guys generally lean toward and let's begin. So the first and easiest approach is just using line art. It's a linear method of just breaking down your shapes and elements. The human eye naturally follows different pathways. We like to look at things and just follow them. Line is a great way to do that in that it emphasizes movement and rhythm rather well. And you can do this with any kind of tool, right? You can do it for this from a pencil, ballpoint pen, highly recommended, to any type of digital sort of medium and format. By far, it's the easiest and minimalist approach to art in general. Drawing is always one of the first skills you start and try to be efficient with before you're moving on a painting. These certainly don't have to be the cleanest of efforts, but they certainly should be readable to you. And of course, if you're presenting them to a client, I recommend just doing a second pass on them to clean them up. Here you can see several different uh, thumbnails that I've been trying uh, for various types of image. They're, they're not pretty they're not supposed to but in this case they were all for me so I can understand them and their final images kind of turned out all right and they all started with this very simple process here now the second of these approaches is value it's not too much harder than using just line but it is a little bit harder because you're factoring in a whole other facet and that's whether how dark or light a line is and or a mark and this mark is going to be making essentially shapes so I recommend for thumbnailing using value to emphasize shapes that are light and dark and that play off each other compositionally. There's really two different ways to kind of go about uh, these as well. One way you can just think of visualizing the space in regards to local value. So you're arranging a scene, the sky is this color, the cars are this color, the ground is this color, right? Something simple like that or you can actually factor in atmospheric depth or compositional depth. Objects that are closer or darker, lighter in the midground and lightest in the sky, or you could even reverse that. Like I said, it's just playing light and dark shapes off each other. So this really, at its core, doesn't factor in light or shadow, but just more so tonal range. The relative darkness or lightness of a shape to what's around it. I love it actually, it's simple, it's direct, you don't have to master lighting to do this, and it's a great way of showing how individuals relate to each other. Type 3, graphic design. This is one of my favorite ways to do it, but it can be a bit tricky. I mean, at my heart, there I really see nothing more pure than a beautifully, crisply designed graphic sensibility to an image. This step, though, essentially combines the first two and with that, of course, it's much easier to distinguish certain patterns and aesthetics this way. So uh, think of your goal if you're doing this approach just to use one value to start, make bold graphic marks to abstractly and simply represent your idea. And then I recommend going in after with maybe softer airbrushes or a little bit more of a tonal wash if you're doing something like watercolor to really kind of add a little bit more of a gradated range to the graphic shapes. If you've done this correctly, it really does organize all these different components into your composition in a very visually pleasing sort of way. Some of my favorite artists that could work this way are Rob Ruppel and the late Frank Frazetta. Now the fourth way is by using light. 
This is certainly a bit more difficult as it does combine lines, different shapes of value, but overall the goal is to organize all of this into shapes of light and shadow. Right, the first time I've really started using these terms as it is a little bit more difficult to understand and calculate if you don't know the fundamentals of light. I'd say overall to get the best effect to use a bit more of, of a range of values, probably anywhere from one to five, two is limiting and more graphic, so probably around four to five values is ideal. But the one question I always ask myself when kind of completing these is what is going to be in light and what is going to be in shadow. Now as a bonus tip, I try to base 70% of, of my image initially in light or shadow and then spring for the other 30 as the opposite. And again, it's going to test your understanding and measure of all of this on a graphic level. You have to make pleasing arrangements and shapes of light and shadow that kind of harmoniously uh, sync with each other. So these are getting a bit more challenging, right? Uh, as a tip, I definitely recommend just taking a photo, you know, with your cell phone of, of any kind of subject or object, and then go back, uh, do a study of it, but try and start with just two different values. Then if that's working, add in a second value. It's a bit more of a graphic study, but you can factor in composition, but just keep it simple and, and set a time limit. If you keep it like five minutes, you'll work it as a thumbnail. You go more than five, you're starting a painting. And so finally, for the last type, full color. These are essentially the same as the lighting comps we just covered, right? But there's a lot more factors to consider. There is the hue, right? Which color you're using, and there is now the saturation of that. That in combination with the fact that you have to budget the value into that as well. Those are those three kind of components of light and color that you need to deal with. So if you can juggle all the basic kind of fundamentals while applying light and color shapes that are factory and composition, right? It starts to, it gets a bit tougher, right? As you're going. But I think the easiest way to do this is to you know, earlier on we were doing this is light or this is shadow. Now you have to take it one step further. This is light and this is shadow, but now this is cool or this is warm. Play cool and warm color ranges off each other. Furthermore, with the additional use of color into these comps, you can start to play a bit more accurately to an emotional response to the viewer. These responses will be derived from the color as different colors can start to have certain subjective meanings. Some colors are happy, some are more calming, some are more aggressive, some reflect angriness, right? So try to think of what colors can play into your composition and you'll be on your way. I can't say it enough. I do think you'll benefit more so than not for just thumbnailing out every idea you have, big and small. But with that said, don't feel like you have to stay within the margin of that thumbnail feel free to let other parts of it change and evolve and certainly be open to new ideas that will happen along the way. Your thumbnails are going to keep getting better as you improve with your skill set as an artist, but in turn, they're really going to help you be a better designer as well. Hey guys, so thank you for watching. Let me know below what is your favorite approach to thumbnailing. I leaned just into values for years. Now I'm back more toward line to do most things, but I do dabble in straight to color quite frequently as well. So I'm constantly changing things up. And as always, I have links below for everything, including my online services, the Patreons, and all my social medias I post regularly on Instagram. Take care, guys.